You know, for many years, the existence of dinosaurs Well, thank you for joining. All married and the dog died. Praise God, I made it. I'm home free. And so far, four grandkids, and that's definitely God's reward for not killing your own kids when you thought about it. So <clears throat> hang in there. It'll be worth it all. All my family lives right around me, and they all work in our ministry. So it's great having uh, kids that love the Lord. It's Dr. Dino. Dinosaur Adventure Land's phone number is 478-DINO-3466 for you alphabetically challenged folks. Who's in the ground to fool us? Well, you're, you're going to look like a real idiot when talking to anybody with normal intelligence when you say something like a geographic. It says, no human being has ever seen a live dinosaur. Now, just hold on a minute. Does he know that or does he think that? He thinks that. There is no possible way he could know something like that unless he talked to everybody that ever lived. something you can know. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It says in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is. Well, if he made everything in six days, then Adam must have seen dinosaurs. It's just no two ways about it. And yesterday we talked about seminar part two, what the garden of Eden was like. It says, God said, let there be a firm A canopy of water overhead, which all fell down at the time of the flood. It's gone now. And there was most of the water under the crust of the earth, which all came shooting. The water that's now in the ocean used to be in the crust of the earth. But it all, it all came shooting out when the fountains of the deep broke open. We cover much more on that on video number six. What caused the flood in the days of Noah? We call it the Hoven theory, so nobody else will get blamed for it. But from the creation, 6,000 years important later, <laughs> people say dinosaurs on the ark. Now, Hoven... They're kind of big, aren't they? Yeah? The big ones were big, but the little ones were little. <laughs> and a blue one. That'll be important later, okay? <laughs> there are all kinds of reasons for bringing babies on the ark, okay? You bring babies because they're smaller for a while. Plus, you bring babies because after the flood, they're going to live longer to produce more offspring, and that's the reason you're bringing them. Why on earth would you bring big elephants on the ark? I mean, that would be stupid for multiple reasons, okay? Why would you bring big giraffes? Two of every sort. He said, bring them after his kind, after their kind, after his kind, after his kind. I mean, the Bible's, you know, real clear on the topic. You bring the kinds of animals, not the species. And you only have to bring those in whose nostrils. Go any place where there's been a flood. After the water goes down, walk out into the mud and tell me the first thing you notice. Bugs. <laughs> All that special breeding to create a dog that's 100% useless. <laughs> you tell what kind of dog it is. Ah, oh, yeah, full-blooded, canardly, yep. Probably the horse and the zebra had a common ancestor, like this Mexican textbook says. And I would agree. The horse and the zebra had a common ancestor, but it looked like a horse, okay? Four-wheel drive, genuine leather upholstery. I mean, all the horse equipment, okay? <laughs> Skeptics say, how did Noah fit those millions of animals onto the ark? Well, the first place, he could speak every language in the world. Well, there's only one, okay? I mean, the guy could walk, talk, name all... Okay, what's next, all right? What else you got for me, God? Plus, how big was the ark? I have atheists that I debate all the time. They'll say, well, nine years ago, there was a big bang where nothing exploded and made everything. And 4.6 billion years ago, the earth cooled down and formed a rocky crust. Yes, the planet earth cooled and a rocky surface was created. And then as the earth formed, the surface was hot and there were large pools and the rocks for millions of years. Millions of years of torrential rains created the oceans. And swirling in the waters of the oceans is a bubbling broth of calm. Three billion years ago, there was a big bang. 4.6 billion years ago, the earth formed. It was a hot ball of rock. And then it began to rain and rain. It 
grandpa was soup. <laughs> That's the evolution theory. I didn't make it up, but they did. So, you know, you can... I said, I would be honored to come for that. <laughs> so I showed up. There were six professors. All Nobody cheered. I said, I believe 6,000 years ago, God made everything. And 4,400 years ago, there was a flood when, you know, everything got destroyed in the, in the flood. And then Noah had two of each kind, not species, kind on the ark. Now, since then, there's been a whole... This one professor was getting very angry. <clears throat> I seem to do that to them. <clears throat> he said, Mr. Hoven, you realize there are... Near Would you look at what you're teaching your students? You're teaching your students that all those dogs came from a rock. He didn't have any more questions after that. I did a debate one time in university, and afterwards this lady came walking down the aisle. Boy, she was mad. The smoke was coming out her nose. She was angry at me. And filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and it was corrupt. All flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. The earth is filled with violence through them. I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark. And Noah said to his boys, Boys, go for wood. we got to build a boat. And so they went and got all this wood, and they built this huge boat. Now, after the flood was over, Noah's son had a baby and named him Arphaxad. Arphaxad? Do you know how to spell it? No. Nobody. Hey, Grandpa, I have a, I have a question. Uh, how come we're the only people in the whole world? You mean we got this whole planet to ourselves? <laughs> what, what happened? And Grandpa's going to tell him the story about the flood. Actually, they're going to talk about that flood for Daddy, Shem, Noah's son, lived long enough to tell that story directly to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You'll never catch that reading your Bible, but... cultures around the world. So far, 270 flood legends have been identified in different countries and cultures around the world. The Hawaiians have a legend that says, long after the death of Kunihana, the first man, the world became a wicked, terrible place to live. There was the waters came up over all the earth and killed all the people. Only Nu'u and his family were saved. Huh, one family saved in a boat full of animals. Civilization. Fuhai is probably Noah, okay? The story says, Fuhai, his wife, three sons, and three daughters escaped a great flood. He and his family were the only people alive on earth. After the great flood, they repopulated the world. Interesting. Now, the Mexican, the total. One family named Cox Cox survived. 1,716 years. Well, the Bible dates add up to uh, 1656 from the creation to the flood. But that's not bad for a legend 4,000 years old. As far as the folks on the boat were concerned, the whole world sank beneath the waves. Actually, they were going up. The world wasn't going down. I think Atlantis is another flood story. Anyway. If you look at the country of Turkey, at the far right-hand side, you will see a mountain called Mount Ararat. It is 12 miles from the Russian border. Very politically unstable region. On a Turkish map, it's called Noah Ungumshi, which means Noah's big boat. That's the name. Why would he stay in there for five and a half extra months after the ark rested? Well, we cover all the reasons why on video number six, the Hoven theory. But the Bible says it rested in the seventh month upon the mountains of Ararat. Mountains, plural. The Bible does not say the ark landed on Mount Ararat. Read it carefully. It does not say that. It says it landed in the mountains of Ararat. Actually, there are four theories about what happened to Noah's ark. Okay? One theory says they took it apart and used the lumber for buildings. Second theory says it rotted. The third theory says it's still on the mountain. And the fourth theory says it's in the valley. And the guys who think it's on the mountain go over there every couple years on a big expedition. They climb the mountain. They all come back and say, you know, we almost 
found it. I'm not sure how you can know you almost found something, but that died in 99. He was a good friend of mine. He and many others have spent years studying this thing, but they think it's Noah's Ark. And like I said, on on this, here's why I believe this one, but go ahead and research yourself. I think you ought to look at all the options. Um, Richard Reeves took over for Ron. There he is in front of his uh, model of Noah's Ark that he built. But according to them, the Ark has collapsed. Obviously, a boat that old would you know, cave in and fold out to the side. It's splayed. And so one of the arguments the skeptics use is, well, it's too wide to be Noah's Ark. Well, of course it's too wide. Boats all do that. They fall instance, pitch made from tree sap. And apparently it's like basic plywood, okay? Huge, thick layers of wood. And there's no grain in the wood. Interesting. It's almost like the trees didn't have growing seasons, the wood they were using. Anyway, the Wyatt Museum is a converted gas station just south of Nashville at exit 27 on the northwest corner. You can stop down there and see him. Mrs. Wyatt wrote a book called The Dooms a Boat-Shaped Object on Doomsday Mountain with all the research she and her husband had done on that. Apparently, the ark landed close to... And or a lava flow that pushed the ark down and broke the bottom off. What used to be the, the keel full of uh, ballast for weight to keep it formations in that area, no question. But this is not one of them. One guy argued it's just a fort. Who would build a fort under a Say it's not Noah's Ark, and they get mad at me for even mentioning. Well, I'm sorry. I'm going to mention it until I start working for you, and then I'll quit. Okay? But uh, the Bible says the ark will be 300 cubits long. Now, a cubit is elbow to fingertip. I'm six foot one. My cubit is 21 inches. The average standard is in the top. Apparently, this rock was to be held over the side of the boat to be what's called an anchor stone or a drogue stone. how you would drill a curved hole through a rock. But <laughs> there they are. When the Sea of Galilee dried up quite a bit here 10 years ago, it, I wrote back, where was he going? <laughs> there is no place to go, okay? The whole Okay? <laughs> you don't have to go anywhere. No sails. You don't have to steer the boat, okay? One atheist said, well, a sailboat was built with six masts and it, it leaked so bad because of the twisting from the sail. Well, Noah's Ark didn't have any sails, okay? It just was designed to float. And some people think it might have had a moon pool in the center. Of course, you've got a wall built up on the inside. It's called a moon pool. As the water goes up and down inside that moon pool going over the waves, it acts like a giant piston. Look at a public school one time to 300 first graders. Try that sometime. I drove a church bus for 17 years and taught junior church for 17 years and um, there were 300 first graders in this room, I'm speaking, and I got my dinosaurs out and I said, boys and girls, millions of years ago. I thought, now wait a minute, these kids are in first grade, okay, they can barely read. Hansela in you know, Mexico and killed them 65 million years ago. A scientist here in Indiana said, the dinosaurs killed themselves off with their own flatulence. like that, but here's the real reason they went extinct. Mm, smoking. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what, what made the dinosaurs did they go extinct? See, the liberals are all okay, and if we're going to have them, then we'll discuss what should be taught in them and who decides what is taught in them. I mean, does Bill Clinton? The government has no business being involved in education, or welfare, or hurricane relief, or anything else. No business at all. If you want to see why the schools went public, get this many good articles, one by Samuel Blumenfeld that's incredible about why we have a public school system. It's all part of the plan for a new world order. Big part of the plan. Get our college class, CSE 102. Two, two was probably worse, people hunted them. They killed them. Now, they didn't call them dinosaur, though. Creatures are called dragons. Did you know dinosaurs not even in the dictionary in 1891? For most of human history, they were known as dragons. So, of course, you're not going to find that word in there. Uh, duh. 
but they called them dragons. Dragons are listed in the dictionary in 1946 as now rare. <laughs> hmm. As the population of people began to grow after the flood for Atlanta, Georgia, zero. Do you know how many there were just 300 years ago? Grizzly bears roaming around Cobb County. Do you know what would happen by 6 o'clock in the morning? They'd all be dead. They'd have his picture on the front page. Hey, Bubba shot the grizzly bear and saved the village. Yeah, he did. <laughs> twelve symbols. They were twelve real animals. Hmm? Here's one of the oldest pieces of pottery on planet Earth with a long neck and a long tail. There's a cylinder seal showing what appears to quite obviously be long-necked dinosaurs. The winged serpent is shaped like the water snake. Its wings are not feathered but resemble very closely those of the bat. Ethiopia. And he ended up marrying the princess of the Ethiopians, and which is why his sister got mad at him later for marrying an Ethiopian. Not because she was black necessarily, but because of how this all happened. You read the story in Josephus' book. Anyway, in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, it talks about... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Was there really a fire-breathing dragon? Well, you better watch the Leviathan video about the fire-breathing dragon. But if you get... Okay. And I will kill this dragon without sword or club. And the king said, I give thee leave. Then Daniel took pitch and fat, and that is salty tasting. And almost all animals like things that are salty tasting. And hair won't digest. So he made little lumps of pitch, fat, and hair, tossed them in. The dragon loved them, swallowed them, couldn't digest them. And they plugged up his intestinal tract. And these has quite an ego problem. He thinks he is Nebuchadnezzar reincarnated. George Bush always called him Saddam Hussein. I wondered, why does he call him Saddam? His name is Saddam. Well, Saddam means prince. Saddam means horse's rear end. Excavated ancient Babylon and rebuilt it. Babylon was totally rebuilt in the last 20 or 30 years, I believe. Saddam put a brick about every 10 But on that wall, they found carvings of lions and carvings of dragons. Now, I can understand why they'd put it like soldiers were scared by dragons when they conquered part of India in 300 B.C. This Roman mosaic shows two long-necked dragons fighting. <clears throat> how, did, how did the Romans know about dragons in 200 A.D.? St. George is famous for slaying a dragon in 27 the page. It says, duh. But anyway, when they translate the story to modern English, the story tells us Baal Well, they found a Babylonian cylinder seal showing a guy pulling the arm off a dragon. Interesting. Get the book After the Flood if you want a whole lot more on dragons living with man. But there's a city in France that's famous because a dragon came up out of the water. The gargoyle. How many of you have ever heard of the gargoyle? They still do that today. You can buy these ugly little critters. You put them on your building or whatever over your door. Well, the word gargoyle means throat. We get our word gargle, gurgle, regurgitate, gorge, and glutton from that word. It has to do with... Why would he say that? Oh, probably because the emperor was raising dragons to pull chariots in his parades. All of them show somebody slaying a dragon. It was common 400 years ago. Everybody knew about slaying dragons. Of course, you've got to slay the dragon. You know, that's just standard procedure. Save the dragon, rescue the princess, or whatever. I don't know. But here's a Russian medallion showing a guy killing a dragon. Bulgarian postage stamp has somebody killing a dragon. The crest of Lithuania shows somebody killing a dragon. A city in France was renamed Nurluk to honor the man who slew the dragon. Indians carved dinosaurs on the walls of the Grand Canyon. Why would they put dinosaurs on the walls of Grand Canyon? Maybe because they hunted dinosaurs around there. Mm-hmm. In 1925, oh no, huh. he said about a year ago, a photograph of a dinosaur was shown to a scientist of national repute who was then specialized oh, no. Hold on just a minute, okay. 
First place, it's not possible for you to know what happened 12 million years ago. Died 65 million years ago, aren't they? 65 million years ago. It's interesting to see the inflation of the age of the earth. See, in 1770, <clears throat> they said the earth was 70,000 years old. By 1902, it was 2 billion years old. In landing Utah, you'll see carvings of dinosaurs on the cliff there. Apparently, they knew about dinosaurs in Utah. The Indians knew about them. They killed them, apparently. This place in Canada, Mishap has something or other here, but it looks like these Indians have painted something on the cliff there that appears to be like a dinosaur. With so many legends of dragons, if nobody's ever seen one. Down in Peru, they've got the driest desert in the world. It's only rained twice in 400 years, is my understanding. When the Spanish came across there in 1500s, they found white lines on the desert. They were obviously man-made. Somebody piled up the rocks. There's a pile of white rocks that goes sometimes for miles, straight as an arrow. These are today are called the Nazca Lines. How many of you have ever heard of the Nazca images? They've got all these images down there and down in Peru. You can study that if you'd like. But strange, these images are interesting. Here's on Earth. It's an eighth of an inch long, little tiny spider, lives a thousand miles away in the dark, in the caves. The spider has no eyes. Stupid after all, hmm? Anyway, in 1535, the Spanish conquistadors came through that area and they found stones with strange animals. If I'm speaking on the Ica stones, oh, it's incredible. You can still get those on our website. But these stones show dinosaurs on them, the Nazca burial stones from about the time of Christ, plus or minus a few hundred years. Some of them show brain surgery. They find quite a few of them, over 500, I believe, show dinosaurs. Why would they have dinosaurs and humans on the same stones? Well, because people lived with uh, dinosaurs. Anyway, there's plenty on they die in their culture, you know. This guy's got the knife stuck in the dragon's head, and the dragon's biting the guy. Recently, they just found uh, uh, unfossilized soft dinosaur tissue. Soft dinosaur tissue? So now the brilliant scientists are trying to figure out how could tissue stay soft for 70 million years? We're dinosaurs. Why would they put dinosaurs on their blankets? Why would they put them on their pottery? Why would they carve them on cliff walls? Why would they put them on their waistbands? In Acumbaro, Mexico, 56,000 ceramic figurines of dinosaurs were found. They knew about them in central Mexico. They have always lived with man. They did not live millions. By the way, you know why so many Italians are named Tony? Years ago, they were shipping them to America, and they stamped on their forehead, to New York. Hmm? <laughs> Just a little bit of trivia there. But the Sutton artifact appears to show what it looks like a uh, pterodactyl with its wings folded up. This lady sent me this picture of the dragon found in uh, Utah. I said, Brother Hogan, looks like a dinosaur to me carved on the cliff up here. Roman, but Brenda the Navigator came across in 500 A.D. Roman coins, or Hebrew coins, were found in Ohio in a burial mound. There's an 80-ton stone showing the Ten Commandments in Byzantine which was only used about 500 A.D., is my understanding. One of these Roman swords shows what quite obviously appears to be a dinosaur on it. How on earth could they get dinosaurs on their, stone, on their swords? Get our video number three if you want more on dragon legends. Did you know there are actually stories of giant octopus living in the ocean? I mean, like, really, really, really big octopus? One octopus washed up on the beach in Florida. It was 200 feet across and weighed five tons. Whales love to eat octopus. And if a whale eats too much octopus, he'll get sick and puke it back up. And there are giant squids found out there in the ocean. I mean, really big squids. We could spend a long time about that one. A giant squid washed up on the beach in New Zealand. Dinosaurs mentioned all through history. Are dinosaurs mentioned in the Bible? Oh, yeah. Dinosaurs in the Bible? Yeah, we're going to cover that in the next session.
Dinosaurs not only mentioned in the Bible, some dinosaurs might still be alive. We'll cover that. Dinosaurs in the Bible. People say, come on, now dinosaurs aren't in the Bible. Well, of course the word's not in there. They didn't make up 42 chapters. Just about dead center in the Bible, just before Psalms, you find a very fascinating book. In Job chapter 1... <clears throat> three daughters. And Job had thousands of sheep and camels and oxen and asses. The guy was rich, really rich. Job was probably written after the flood, but before the law was given in the days of Moses. Before the flood, they lived to be 900. After the flood, they lived to be 400. See, Job lived long enough to have 10 kids all grown out of the house. They all died. He had 10 more. All 10 of your kids are dead. Job's having a bad day. And then Job said, the Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. And his wife turned against him. You know, man can handle just about any tragedy in life, but that's the toughest one right there. There's a verse you probably never heard preached on ever. Ephesians chapter 5 talks about, you know, husbands love your wives. Treat him like a god. Offer him burnt sacrifices three times a day. Okay? <laughs> said, you speak like one of the foolish women. Can't we receive good at the hand of God and not evil? And then Job's four friends came to visit him. One of those guys was the shortest man mentioned in the Bible. Bildad the Shuhite. That's... Pretty short, okay? But these four guys came and they talked to Job for 35 chapters. Most of the book of Job is these guys explaining to Job why everything went wrong. Whoever perished being innocent. Job, the reason bad things are happening to you is because you sinned. Now, folks, that is the wisdom of Love them, pray for them, encourage them, and shut up. Amen. Don't go to the hospital when they get their gallstones. People trying to do right. It happens, all right? But if something bad happens, what's your response? Job said, I wish the Lord would answer me. See, Job. Now, this verse does not say everything that happens is good. It doesn't say that. It says it'll work together, full of salt. Now that'll fill you up. That ain't going to help. I got it. How about a spoonful of bacon soda? And do you know everything that happens to you might not be good, but it'll work together for good if you love God and you're called according to His purpose. See, the Christian life is so simple. Keep your heart right with God. That's it. Now that'll be tough to do because the heart is deceived. tornado starts talking to me, I'm going to pay attention. And the Lord said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Hey, Job, your four friends did not know what they were talking about. And by the way, be very careful about getting any Bible doctrine from the book of Job, okay? It's true that the guys said it, but what they said was not true. And cults are always good at picking a verse out here. You better read, better read the whole chapter, okay? Now, I believe the Bible is the Word of God, but the Bible contains some lies. It acts. God said, Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me, Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? I read that 36 years ago as a brand new Christian. And I thought, what a dumb question. God, why would you ask Job where he was when you laid the foundations of the earth? I said, God, he wasn't there. You know that, and he knows that. So why are you asking such a question? How many of you were here when God built the earth? Was anybody here when God made the earth? Only a couple of Mormons, okay. Yeah. You're in your second existence, I understand, okay. No, you were not here when God built the earth. So kids, but I say it a lot, and I think about it till my brain hurts. Did it ever occur to you that nothing ever occurred to God?
understands the imaginations of the thoughts. That's a fascinating verse. He not only knows your thoughts, he knows the imaginations of the thoughts. The brain is amazing. The Bible says God knows the thoughts of man. And by the way, it says in Luke, he, Jesus knowing their thoughts. That's one of many verses that proves Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. God knows your thoughts and he loves you anyway. Wow. Praise God for his mercy, right? Job 38, 4. God said, declare if thou hast... Of God's questions. God said, Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea? Did you know scientists didn't even know there were springs in the sea until 1977? Just discovered. Science is very slowly catching up with a few parts of the Bible. God said, Where is the way where light dwelleth? Now that is fascinating. I taught physics. Did you know light doesn't stay in a place, it's in a One hundred eighty-six thousand two hundred eighty-two point four miles per second. Do you know what the speed of dark is? Zero. Darkness cannot move. Now think about it. We are the children of light. We are supposed to be on the move. You know, get something done for God. It's, the reason it's dark is because of you. Right? You're the light to turn it on. Right. The Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Hey, gates don't attack you. You attack them. Yeah, let's go, man. Do something for God. Anyway, is God telling Job that electricity can be used to send a message? Like radio, cell phone? God asked Job 84 questions. Job never answered one. These are the kind of questions that don't need an answer. The question was designed <coughs> to change the person's attitude. These are the same kind of questions you dads have to ask your kids. See, I've got three kids, one of each. I know what I'm talking about. Kids get to a certain age, and they get kind of cocky, and they think... ...up to four in the morning with my friends. After all, I'm ten now. <laughs> and dad says, hold on just a minute, kid. Around this house. Huh? Who's paying for the house? Who paid for them clothes you're wearing, son? Who paid for that bed you slept on last night? Who pays for... ...a month ago. <laughs> Let's just get it straight, son. The Bible is very clear. He who payeth the bills maketh the rules. To sleep under and do it your way. See, that's the golden rule, son. He that hath the gold maketh the rules. Who do you think you are, kid? Where were you when we brought this property and cleared this land and drove off the grizzly bears and marched uphill to school 40 miles in the snow? God asked Job 84 questions. Job never answered one. But Job got an attitude adjustment. See, Job had the same. God said, Behold now, behemoth. Well, what on earth is a behemoth? Well, whatever. Behemoth, if he could not behold now, behemoth. That's deep theology, I know, okay, but think it through, all right? Now, some reference Bibles say behemoth. It says he eats grasses and ox. Some people say, hey, my Bible says elephant and elephants eat grass. Well, duh, bunny rabbits eat grass. is his belly. And they say, well, elephants have a big belly. Yes, I know. Hippopotamus have a big belly. Brachiosaurus had a big belly. He has a big belly. <laughs> so does he. <laughs> that is just sick, sick. Who would, who would pose for that? Anyway, it says, he moveth his tail like a cedar. Now, hold on a minute. His tail is like a cedar tree. Have you ever seen an elephant's tail? I mean, once, and then comment on it, okay? 
By the way, you preachers, if you're going to preach on a passage, at least read it once before you preach on it, okay? Yeah, all right. Anyway, next verse says, His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. He has big, heavy-duty bones. Now, this will be kind of complicated, so listen carefully. The reason he had such big toe bones Okay. And the reason he had those big toes is because he had a big foot. Wow. There's a kid taking a bath in a brachiosaur footprint. Pictures on the book right The biggest dinosaur found so far is 60 feet to the top of the head. Found in Oklahoma. They say it's going to take them 20 years to dig all the bones out of the ground because it is a government project. They say when it was alive, it probably... You would be deeply impressed by him. <laughs> you would be road pizza. Mm -hmm. Save so much money for the highway department, construction crews, utility companies, and the military. Oh, and all I want is 10% of the savings, and I'll be the richest man on planet Earth. I have invented a shovel that will stand up by itself. <laughs> you won't need to pay those guys to lean on it anymore. Mm, I thank you, I know. <laughs> Next verse says, he's the chief. And that kind of fits the pattern for the way the devil works, you know. Whenever God makes things, the devil tries to destroy them. God makes beautiful things, and Satan always tries to destroy them. Hey, question, how big is your God? I mean, do you ever think about that? When you stop and pray and you say, Heavenly Father, do you have any idea who you're talking to? I mean, have you ever stopped and just thought about that? Who are you about to talk to? I mean, you sit down for lunch, you know, and you're going to pray. Okay, bless the bunch as they crunch the lunch. Amen. Now, pay attention. Now, here's my prayers. Give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this, and give me this, and give it quick. That's about what it boils down to. For instance, does God tell you what kind of clothes to wear? Now, First Timothy says the women should dress modestly. Happy? Yes, sir. It's absolutely no-brainer. Is how big is your God? I mean, who is God of your life? The mouth speaketh. That's a good uh, verse to quote to somebody when you hear him cuss, by the way. Uh, does God control what you watch on TV? Psalm 101 says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. If you hear a cuss word on TV, you're going to shut it off for two hours. If you see somebody immodestly dressed, you're going to shut it off for two hours. If you see somebody drinking alcohol, you're going to shut it off for two hours. What if you just made those three simple rules at your house? How much TV would you watch? None. So you might as well sell it and give that 30 bucks a month for the cable bill to a missionary and we could, we could win the whole world to Christ, couldn't we? Yeah. Um, this has invented some ungodly music you shouldn't listen to. Somebody asked me one time, and they said, Hovind, do you know what you get if you play country music backwards? God created a male and female. Did you know God invented marriage and the family and sex? I mean, He invented the whole thing. And He wants it to be wonderful. But so He put some rules down. Boys, don't touch the girls until you're married to them. Now, if you don't want to touch them, then stay away from me. I saw your kind in San Francisco, okay? But God put the rules down. <laughs> he put the rules down because he wants the best. He said the adulteress will hunt for the precious Zsa, Zsa Gabor married one day. Do you know why they got to get married again every six months? They're hunting for the precious life. They don't have it. Now, listen carefully. Don't pay any attention to Hollywood.
aisle, and the preacher says, wilt thou, and then you wilt, or whatever they do, and then you stay faithful to that one the rest of your life, that is the precious dinosaurs against God. But he couldn't fool Adam, not with dinosaurs. Adam named them. 1809, first dinosaur that we know of, put together for a museum. Satan was there that day and said, wow, here's my chance. These critters have always lived with man. I know that, and God knows that. But these people don't know that. So the devil of years ago. Hey, uh, how many kids are being taught that in your town? At your expense, you are paying for the destruction of the next generation. Now, maybe that doesn't bother you, but it bothers me. And if you think I leave my gore, I'd much rather be home. But there's a war going on. Somebody's got to warn the troops. Hello, to arms. The British are coming. You know, pick up your gun, guys. Let's go. There are kids by the billions being brainwashed on this planet. And Satan is using dinosaurs. Well, study to show yourself approved unto God. Amen. Get the answer and go share it with somebody, okay? Millions of years ago, the book says. I go to museums all the time. just makes my blood boil. You see hundreds and hundreds of kids coming past these incredible displays. I mean, beautiful big dinosaur skeletons. And guess what the sign says at the bottom? Millions of years ago. See, Christians don't seem to understand this. The museums and science centers of the world, that is their church. They are preaching their gospel just like you are trying to preach your gospel. And they're using your tax dollars to preach their gospel. Koala Swamp. That swamp is huge. Most Americans don't appreciate the size of Africa. Here's what Africa looks like next to... is the same size as the state of, state of Florida, 55,000 square miles. That swamp is huge. The communists liberate countries. They kill everybody. Okay, you're free now. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> there were reports in that swamp <clears throat> from the 1700s. Harold ran an article about dinosaurs still living in Africa's swamps. Here's a Saturday Evening Post, 1948. There could be dinosaurs still alive in Africa. Now, if you're a pygmy four foot four, a 50 foot crocodile looks really big to you, okay? In 2005, they killed a 24 foot crocodile in that swamp. Of course, the natives will say, oh, you should see the big ones. The natives also talk about an animal they call Mokale Umbembe. Mokale Umbembe. The natives claim these animals live underwater. They're very rare. Of course, they're in the swamp in Africa, and nobody goes out at night anyway, and there's no lights over there. Dr. Mackle was a University of Chicago microbiology professor, and he went over there and studied this carefully and came back and wrote a book called, There Have Been Reports of These Creatures in That Swamp for a Long Time. One Belgian Congo biologist went up there, upriver 500 miles, dinosaurs still living. <clears throat> the natives claim these animals live in caves along the side of the river. Uh, William Gibbons has been there four times now to the Congo swamp. He and I wrote this book together for kids, Claws, Jaws, and Dinosaurs. William Gibbons wrote me a letter. He said, According to our guide, Pierre Sima, we were the first white men to actually penetrate the forest and swamps bordering the Buamba River. Our informants, almost all of them Baca pygmies, with the exception of an elderly Cameroonian Muslim, are perfectly familiar with all the known and unknown animals of the swamps. There's the river and controls large stretches of the river, particularly where those food supplies, where the food supplies present. The two suspected engineers and was known as a order, as recorder of meticulous recorder of facts. In the Benny Swamps, he said he saw ocean. An article like this would never make it in Scientific American today because now they're dedicated to preserving the theory. But they said the Brazilian minister, Betty, examined the beast, said it's a member of a lost species. The Indians in that region make small earthen vessels in the same shape.
He said, yeah, the natives in his area uh, talk about a lizard that's 30 feet long, 5 feet tall, makes a thundering noise to startle its prey. The native YY Indians call it uh, Uru Ferry, and they are terrified of this creature. Here's his email, Vaughn at GoffMinistries.org. Email him. They're talking about dinosaurs still in the swamp down there. Here's a giant snake that was killed several years ago, 35-foot snake. It had eaten a man who fell asleep on the job. <laughs> Stay awake on the job, fellas, okay? This snake was reported in Indonesia being 49 feet long. I don't know if it's true or not, but I mean, they might, people might have exaggerated, but that's the report. He killed a 98-foot snake, two feet in diameter, weighed two tons. The cook from a hotel in Amazon said they saw a 100-foot snake that the military hunted down after it had killed and eaten two soldiers. The head was five feet long. Reuters News Service reported a 130-foot snake back in 97. This thing floated down the Amazon River Nobody poked it to see if it was alive. It's huge. In 1933, a roadbed was cut into the side of the mountain. Because before 1933, if you wanted to see the lake, you got to climb over the mountains or go up river seven miles in your boat. So not many people went there. Very sparsely populated. This author said there have been 9,000 reported sightings today. Now, that was back in the 1960s when this book was written. Today, it's over 11,000 reported sightings of the Loch Ness. Almost everybody that sees it says it's this animal right here, a plesiosaurus. Long neck. Along with this theory, plesiosaurs are believed to have become extinct 70 million years ago. Oh, is that what's wrong with the theory? <laughs> I think this evolution theory has got to be the biggest hindrance to scientific research there's ever been. Motorcycle one night. He said, I had a splendid view of the object. In fact, I almost struck it with my motorcycle. It had a long... They crop everything down. They cut the neck off when they published their picture. The crop picture, but Mark McLeod said he watched it for nine. All you got to do is, you know, watch TV programs once in a while where they talk about the Loch Ness monster. There are thousands of people who will go on record and say, "I have seen it." World Book Encyclopedia paid to have a submarine taken over there from South Carolina, the mini sub. Japanese put 24 boats, went all the way down the lake and reported, they scanned the bottom with radar, sonar, and said, man, this is a deep lake, and it's wrinkled up like a raisin. And there are caves going off to the side. Probably with air chambers, the creature can come up under, and you know, go under the, inside the mountain. Reader's Digest published this picture, and back in 78, pictures right there on the floor about Nessie with, Nessie with its mouth open. <clears throat> we can go all day about Loch Ness Monster, but they said this photograph was a fake, and it probably was, but I don't know. It's interesting, they waited till the last guy involved died to announce it's a fake. Now how do you check out the truth? But anyway, there are other lakes besides Loch Ness. There's Loch Lochie, Loch Morar, there are many other France. There's a guy uh, standing there looking at it for scale. Uh, a couple of scientists reported this creature swam past their boat in Brazil in 1905. They reported the whole thing in a scientific journal. The creature had a long neck, <clears throat> six feet. On a neck about seven or eight feet long. Two experienced British naturalists reported the thing. And again, we can go all day on reported sightings. This thing, in, in 1977, a Japanese fishing boat pulled this up in their net. It was 32 feet long, 4,000 pounds. They said, what on earth is that? The captain said, I don't know, but it stinks. <laughs> when they set it down on the deck, it broke in half, and pus oozed out everywhere. So they made a bunch of sketches, took a bunch of pictures, and shoved it overboard. A special stamp was made for Japanese mail. 19 okay. It could have been about, it doesn't matter to me. They said the protein is 96% similar. Yes, I know, but nobody's ever seen plesiosaur protein, okay, to know what it's supposed to look like. Humans and apes are similar, but have many differences also. Anyway, there's a lot of arguments about that. It doesn't matter to me, but some people get all bent out of shape because they even mention, you know, the Japanese catch of 1977. Russians report a creature in a lake up there. They're called Mystery of the Lake here. A it will look like a dinosaur washed up on the beach in Russia in 1994. It was 39 feet long. 
This thing apparently <clears throat> is a doctored photo of a shark. Somebody with Photoshop, you know, made it look like a, a plesiosaur, but actually it's a doctored photo. But uh, so be careful. There's plenty of frauds. In, in 2004, a bunch of people over in Papua New Guinea reported a creature like a dinosaur, 10 feet tall, with a head in Lake Ikeda. In China, there's reported uh, one called uh, USO, Unidentified Swimming Object, <laughs> uh, uh, called the Lake Okanagan. It's a huge lake. It's 80 miles long. I've been up there twice to speak in the town of Kelowna. The, na the natives call this creature the Ogopogo. We sell a book uh, on our table back there if you want to get that. The Ogopogo, very similar to Loch Ness Monster. Thousands of folks claim they've seen that one. This article says they were the latest among thousands to see something strange in this narrow 80-mile-long lake. One guy swam the length of the lake and said the thing came up under him, scared him half. He and his family were sleeping in their boat on the lake. They're camping out on the lake in their big boat. And something bumped the bottom of their boat and woke them all up in the middle of the early, early in the morning. You know, pretty far away, but he gave me the, uh, the copy of the video footage of what he saw at about, you know, quite too far away to make out the details. But he said, look, Hoven, I saw the ogre front flippers and a long-necked uh, uh, long beast with a horse-like head. One guy caught a baby one with his dip net, drew a... Canada ...when a creature chased their boat off Cape Sable Island, Nova Scotia, when I was preaching up there. Uh, it happened in 1992. A lot of people went and analyzed it. I don't think it's ever positively determined what it is. It might have been a basking shark, but we, nobody knows positively. <clears throat> uh, a good book by Lauren Coleman, who is a cryptozoologist, but also an evolutionist, okay? I debate, I, I debate nothing. I, I interviewed uh, creatures swimming around out there. They call it the Block Ness Monster. <laughs> One washed up in 1996, and all about Lake Erie's monster. Okay, you can read all that for yourself, but... Uh, <clears throat> a dead baby creature was found on the beach of Lake Erie. A guy took it home, stuffed it, and mounted it. He's They're not sure what. It may be a fake. Nobody knows, but very interesting little critter. I interviewed the sheriff who saw that was the first guys to see the Situate Harbor monster, 50 feet long, when it washed up on the beach. Everybody started cutting pieces off. By the time they got the photo taken, it was pretty butchered up. Some people argued it's a basking shark. Others said it's a real sea serpent. The health department said, we don't care. It stinks. We're getting out of here. And so they blew it up with dynamite. California, 1925, this critter washed up on the beach. That's the head. Here's the neck going down to the right. Ought to be between the head and the flippers. Hmm. He said it's a rare form of bard's beaked whale. Oh, Newport, Arkansas has been reported many times. Up until 1973, it apparently disappeared. Arkansas Senate passed a resolution that said it's unlawful to molest, kill. Oh, I know I saw a dinosaur. She and her husband and two kids watched it for 10 minutes. 58 people on the Ethan Allen, which capsized earlier a couple months ago, you know, uh, people, uh, some people think they all ran to one side to see something and fl fl flipped the boat over. I don't know, maybe it's just too many Twinkies, but. Uh, the captain on board back in 898 said, if right next to Eric, that telephone pole-like figure broke water, I could see the long neck and two small eyes. The mouth opened and it bent over. It dove on top of Eric, dragging him under. He said, I finally made it to the top of the uh, ship and stayed there most of the night. Next morning, I swam. Beach, Florida one time and Valerie Bill came to me and said, Mr. Hoven, my, my stepson, Larry Bill, was one of the kids who was eaten. That story you are telling is correct. Harbor. There have been many reports of dinosaurs still living. There could be some pterodactyls still alive. The natives cried to about the dinosaurs. Now, I don't think there's many and it's probably safe to go to the dorm, okay? Don't get excited and think, wow, we're going to get eaten by a dinosaur. <laughs> no, it's not that way. The hallway will be clear tonight, I assure you, okay? But the Indians had a legend called the Thunderbird on them. Now Henry Ford put an eagle on the taillight of his thunderbird. It should have been a pterodactyl. You blew it, Henry. 
Uh, French explorers uh, Jacques Marquette and Joliet stopped near what Oh, it's a Piasaw bird. A great chief killed him years ago. They painted the picture up there for years. They finally put a big metal plaque. There's when you get dinosaurs. He's the chief of the ways of God. Well, then God ought to get the glory. Now, the Bible also talks about Leviathan, but that's a whole other story. We'll cover Leviathan some other time. So basically, God made everything in six days. Dinosaurs lived with man. People have killed most of them. There could be. Well, this is Kent Hovind. It is uh, August 31st, 1990. Uh, this was, this took, why don't you tell us uh, when it was and where you were and just a little bit of We were exploring the lake. I grew up in that area. And we were just exploring the lake, sitting there, enjoying the peace and And looked out, I thought perhaps it was a school of fish, or maybe a scuba diver or something. And then the head and the neck broke the surface of the water, and the head picked up in the neck in the back. And I knew it wasn't a fish. Right. <laughs> well, great. And some people said they, 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 I heard somebody told you this one as champ, but you said it was a little different, what you saw. Yes, what I saw is the neck was not near as long. Holding. And then there's the elasmosaur. Uh, had a shorter neck, and the head is at a right angle to the body instead of in line with the body. All right, so this was in, back in 1977. Um, how many other people do you know or have you talked to that claim they have seen it also? I have spoken with probably about six different people who have seen it. Mm -hmm. And all of our, just the massive size of it. Okay, now you, you watched it for... About how long, would you say? Probably. Okay. And um, you told me the last time we talked, about a year ago, that when it first came up, it was um, looking different directions. It was did take the one snapshot, it was getting fidgety. It was getting a little more movement to it. And it had turned its head to look over its back. And that's when I got the snapshot. And then it... That's one. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure of it. God created one. He created many. I was a scientist, science teacher, 15 years. I'm of a strong, studied opinion that uh, a few dinosaurs are even still alive. The world is... Gave that. I, I was shaking. And I went down on my knees, I picked the camera up, I took the one photograph, and then put it down. To rationalize. And I'm trying to think, well, what is this? And, and there comes a point when you cannot rationalize. are those who believe in evolution. Yes. And how do you feel about that? Mm. You don't like that. <laughs> I agree with you 100%. Yeah. And, and I appreciate you letting me use your picture. I put it on one of my posters. Uh, Wonderful. And uh, I have quite a few pictures from different people. And my motive is to strengthen people's faith in the Bible. The Bible is the word of God. And uh, there's Sandy's picture. You've been featured in a number of uh, shows and magazines and things like that. And you're just, you've lived here how long? In, in, in Winchester? About 20 years. 20 years. So you I could have 